Hello everyone, this is now the month of March. The month of March is often when, if you are new, you have been told by your teacher that I'm about to take part in the SMO sometime in the end of May. I don't know anything about the SMO and I am not too bad at math and I want to know how things are going to go. How do I prepare? What, what should I do? Specifically, some of you want to know how do I prepare for the SMO on my own. Now, of course, I'm an Olympiad teacher. I have students that I am preparing for the SMO. But how about those of you who say, I don't have a lot of time. I don't really know who I want to learn from anyway. I just want to get started and just prepare by myself. This is something that's actually very good. This is something that is perfectly fine. I prepared for the SMO by myself as a student and so I just want to give some quick tips on how to get started. Now, the first thing before we talk about any fancy preparation things is that you have to know what you're preparing for. Now, something I like to do before any competition, before any exam, before any course, even in school, before let's say I'm going to start Sec 3, I like to look at the final exam of Sec 3 just to know what am I getting myself into this year. So try any recent SMO paper and I mean that if you're starting, please start with round 1 first. Uh, you don't want to start with round 2 because if you're watching this video and you're new, you will most probably be very confused by round 2. It will make sense eventually but not for now. So start with round 1. If you want to know where to find it, there are a few options. You will be able to um, find on this channel the last few years of the SMO. I've done a review on the same day or the day after the contest. But if you want to, let's say, find some more papers, just Google it. For example, if right now you were to pause this video and just Google SMO Senior 2018, you would probably find one or two links where you would be able to find the questions and answers. So Google for a recent paper or use the ones that I have in the recent uh, YouTube reviews and make sure of course that you pick the correct section. The main purpose of this is to just give you an idea of where you are starting from. And if you want to know where you're starting from, just uh, try to find a so-called fresh paper. Now the definition of a fresh paper is just a paper where you have not seen any of the questions explicitly before or if that's not possible, you have not seen most of the questions before. This will give you a decent idea of where you're beginning from. For the coming March holidays, uh, I will be um, conducting a class where let's say I have set a fresh set of 25 questions. But these are often for those of my students who have already seen the last few years of the SMO and so it will not be fresh anymore. If you're completely new, you are going to have the advantage of basically every single paper being a fresh paper. So just use any of them. For now, I think this sounds very reasonable, but I have to give the pre-warning, which is please don't panic. The SMO is hard. Um, some of your friends have told you, don't waste your time on the SMO, it's impossible anyway, our whole school, everyone just got a certificate of participation. That may be true, your friend may be telling you the truth, but don't be embarrassed if let's say you get what seems to be a really low score. If you're getting something like a 6 out of 25 on your practice, it's possible that that's enough for an honourable mention. It's not useless to get 6 out of 25. In school, if you're 6 out of 25, that's a big problem. In the SMO, that gets you an award. But even if you say, no, I didn't even get 6 out of 25, I got 2 out of 25, right? This is just hopeless. If you start with 2 out of 25, you're not aiming to get 25 out of 25, you are probably happy if you can improve that to 8 out of 25. So that sort of improvement by like 5 or 6 points is very achievable. So don't panic yet. Don't give up. Now, only if you're at least able to get 50%, which is possible, but honestly, unlikely for a first attempt. But if you do get about 50%, then 
feel free to look at some round two problems already. I think you're ready to at least understand them and give them some reasonable attempt. Otherwise, don't worry about it for now. Just focus on the round one. You would notice that I say continue practicing. I didn't say please learn this or please learn that. And that's because for the recurring ideas in the SMO, there'll be probably about 70% of them are technically from school. Now, technically from school doesn't mean that you have seen the question in school before, but let's say for the SMO junior, maybe you just need to know how to factorize a quadratic or solve simultaneous equations. Maybe in the SMO senior, you just need to know your sine double angle identity. Maybe for the SMO open, you just need to know how to work with a geometric progression. Now, these are not new, but the way in which they use them are new. So you can just dive straight into the problems and start to appreciate, oh yeah, this idea came up again. And you'll see that your scores naturally improve. They will not improve upwards in the sense of a straight line linear graph. They are definitely not going to also be going up in an exponential graph, but it will kind of just be like this kind of like like generally trending upwards of path. So it will sometimes drop, but you know, this is a very realistic depiction of what your scores will look like in your own practice. You then need to learn from the solutions. Now this is a step that often gets missed out or gets taken too far. You want to get the correct balance. You want to read a solution, watch the solution if it's from me or from some other teacher. You want to listen to the solution if you have an Olympiad trainer. But even if you solve the question, still try to listen to the solution anyway. Right? This is the thing that many of you will not do because you say, I got the question, I got the answer correct. Perhaps you can do it in half the time or perhaps your method just happened to work but it would easily not work some other time. So read the solution. Now, what you want to do with the solutions is that if there's any named theorem, so the theorem is called the angle bisector theorem, you can Google it. All of these are going to be so-called famous theorems. You can just search what does Mr. Google say about your mystery theorem that you have never heard of. And once you understand what the theorem says, the question you just failed to solve would be an application of it. So you don't need someone to build a worksheet for you. If let's say the question said the angle bisector theorem, once you Google it, the question is the example of how to use the angle bisector theorem immediately. But other than named theorems, don't memorize anything. Don't try to memorize the steps because the intuition is more important. And the intuition is basically, how would I have thought of this myself? What sort of clues does the question have? What sort of hints were there in how the variables were set up or how the diagram was set up or how the problem was worded. After a while, you will also be able to try to connect it to previous problems. Let's say, was there a similar problem that you've seen before, which could be same question, but a different solution? It could also be a different problem with the same solution. Now, different problem, the same solution means that they look different, actually they're the same thing. So you've seen that solution before, but the problem was totally different looking. So how would I recognize that these two are actually the same thing? The reverse is that they look the same, but actually there is some subtle difference. What is the difference such that the method is totally different? And if you can't figure it out, maybe the same method works. It's just that the SMO book or my video only will show you one solution. So there could be a different way and try that out. A few common issues that you will face would be that the questions are too hard. If the questions are too hard such that I really, really cannot solve any of them, then you should probably just try to at least get used to solving some problems. So if it's the SMO senior that you're taking, but you can only solve, let's say, three or four out of 25 problems every time. Try the SMO junior for a little bit. There's no shame in that. What it gets you is into the habit of solving a question in full rather than getting stuck halfway. I'm sure someone will ask, how about if I'm in the SMO junior? 
go to your P5 or P6 Olympiads, your NMOS, your SMOPS, your RMO, go to those. But obviously with a slightly higher target in mind than if let's say a primary school student was taking it, right? But step down because that gets you into the habit of solving problems fully. Next thing is if you can't understand the solution regardless. In that case, find a solution from another source. Let's say if my video solution was not very clear to you because maybe you didn't like the method I used. Ask somebody else or try the SMO book or try to find another video or just look elsewhere. And if you cannot find anywhere else that has a solution, ask someone else. The third issue is about time. And when you say two and a half hours isn't enough time, this is usually a good sign. Why is this a good sign? Because if you can only solve two questions, I don't think you would have said that. In order for you to be running out of time, you must at least be doing a meaningful number of questions. So this is a good thing. Right? After a while, you realize that, oh no, now I'm actually able to solve more questions, but I don't have time to do them. Keep on practicing and you will find that, let's say, things like mental calculations. SMO has no calculators, so that is one of the headaches at the start. Practice will help you to speed this aspect up. Now, finally, uh, what if your score is stagnating? It's going nowhere. I am just repeatedly scoring 8 out of 25 every time. Then you need to at least get the experience of solving a hard question. And time is often going to be what stops you from that experience. So solve it untimed. Now, untimed allows you to experiment. Experiment with three methods that failed before the fourth one worked, and you get that satisfaction of saying, you know what, I can actually solve these questions. Now, finally, uh, very important, Olympiads are meant to be fun. Right? I'm doing this as a job, when I'm teaching Olympiads, I still find it fun. Most of you have a lot of other subjects to do. You have many other things to do. You have your CCAs, you have got various commitments. And so Olympiads should not be a burden. It should be fun. And that means don't keep thinking of your score. Why am I only scoring this? Enjoy the solution. Just think, wow, the person who thought of this question is pretty clever. Or the person who thought of this solution is pretty clever. Enjoy the fact also that you can't fully prepare for any Olympiad because it is kind of a specialty of Olympiads that every year the person who sets it is trying to make sure that there are questions that no one has seen before or at least most students have not seen before. They're trying to make it look new. So you can't say I will practice everything or I will cover the whole syllabus. There is no syllabus. And finally, when I've said practice, don't make it into a mindless grind because if you really, really say, I am going to do all the Olympiad questions I can ever find. Every day, I will do 20 questions, 30 questions, 40 questions, 50 questions. At some point, you will see the questions repeat and you will be able to sort of memorize the answers, but that's not how Olympiads are meant to be done. It's not going to work as you go on to, let's say, the senior and the open and the possible set of questions expands too much. So it may work at the primary school level, but at the SMO level, you really have to appreciate the intuition. So practice not in a brainless way to try to memorize answers. And one final word. If you're watching this SMO because it's tomorrow, I know some of you uh, would be watching this the night before the SMO, what you should do now, if the SMO is tomorrow, is just to make sure that you don't go to bed with something in your head like, I still don't remember this. If there's any formula, let's say I know the sign rule, but I forgot the sign rule, that's unlikely, maybe the cosine rule, I forgot the cosine rule. If there's any specific formula, please refresh it. Don't go into the SMO saying, I forgot what the quadratic formula is, even though I know I'm supposed to use it. That's pretty sad. Also, if there's any questions that's bugging you, find a way to get help just so that you don't go into the SMO thinking, oh no, if this question shows up, I don't know how to do it. Apart from this, just relax. The SMO and any Olympiad is about just creativity and intuition. You can't really 
turn around your whole preparation in one night just like let's say for something like your English or your mother tongue exam studying the night before is not going to make you suddenly better at that language so there's a limitation why you can do the night before just clear any doubts and that's the best that you can do so this is just a quick um, introduction for those of you who are new to the SMO this is not a mathematical introduction this is just a mindset kind of introduction We'll do a little bit more of math in the coming weeks. As the SMO approaches, the, there should be more uploads, so stay tuned for that. Otherwise, thanks everyone for watching, and see you again soon.